Hey Bob, you look worried. Why? I have transmitted a signal, but I am not able to receive it clearly. Uh, I guess your signal is getting deteriorated due to ISI. What is ISI? In communication systems, data is transmitted as ones and zeros, which can be represented using rectangular pulses of finite duration tau. The frequency domain representation of rectangular pulse is a sync pulse of infinite duration, whose most of the energy is concentrated within minus one by tau to plus one by tau. This implies a pulse of duration tau requires twice its bandwidth for reliable transmission. For a band limited system, if we want to increase the data rate, we have to increase the number of pulses transmitted every second. This implies that the symbol duration tau will have to be decreased. A decrease in the time period tau indicates an increase in the frequency requirement one upon tau. Okay. That is, bandwidth increases. If the channel is band limited, this increase in the bandwidth may overlap with the neighboring channels, leading to inter-symbol interference. That is. ISI. Then uh, how do I overcome this ISI? To mitigate ISI, Nyquist suggested that the theoretical minimum bandwidth needed for transmission of RB symbols per second is RB by 2 Hz. And when a pulse is transmitted through a channel with sufficient bandwidth, in order to maintain zero ISI, it must satisfy the following condition that the pulse should be 1 at sampling instant 0 and should be equal to 0 for all other integral multiples of bit period TB. But how do I practically implement it? The answer is pulse shaping. There are two criteria for non-interference systems where pulse shaping is employed. Number 1. The pulse shape exhibits a zero crossing at the sampling point of all pulse intervals except its own. And number two, the pulse shape must be such that the amplitude decays rapidly outside the pulse interval. Oh, just like the rectangular pulse which goes to zero at sampling instance minus TB and plus TB. Uh, hey, but its energy does not decay rapidly outside the pulse interval. In fact, it extends to infinite bandwidth. <laughs> yes. Hence, we use a raised cosine pulse which satisfies both the criteria and thus provide an ISI free system. A raised cosine pulse takes the shape of a sync pulse in time domain and hence its frequency domain representation is similar to a gating function. Thus we can limit the signal bandwidth in the frequency domain avoiding ISI using raised cosine pulses or filters. The raised cosine pulses are characterized by the role of factor. Higher the role of factor, steeper the window in frequency domain. And lesser the role of factor, larger the window in frequency domain. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we must ensure an optimum balance between the role of factor and the bandwidth it occupies in order for the pulse to travel undistorted in a given band limited channel. Thanks, Ellis. Hey, don't thank me. But thank the creators of this video, Priyadarshani Adap, Anuja Gote, Preeti Tonpe, under the guidance of Dr. Saurabh Mehta, Vidalankar Institute of Technology. Thank you all. Created using Powtoon.